Hi everybody. The Adani Group is one of the most powerful business houses in the country. One of the country's largest business empires. Adani Group. Adani Group companies. Adani Group's market capitalization has jumped over 76,000 crores. And more importantly, the Adani Group has been a major contributor to the economy of India because they have transformed the way Indian ports operate and compete in the international market. Whenever he speaks about his group, he always says that his conglomerate's goals are aligned to India's goals. By 2030 what we are targeting to do is to be a uh, largest port company globally and also from an india perspective to be the largest transport utility i anticipate that within the next decade india will start adding a trillion dollars to its gdp every 12 to 18 months it is the belief in the india growth story that keeps the adani group going and now the adanis the state government of kerala and the central government of india are coming together to build something called a deep water transshipment port in india new adani mega port uh, can lure world's biggest ships to india located near the south most tip of the country construction of a multi million dollar port in india's southern state of kerala and this project is the visinjum port in kerala visinjum port will emerge as the largest private port in kerala and will be a huge revenue contributor to the state and this project is such a massive project that it cost more than 7600 crores at the same time it is so revolutionary that once built this port could single handedly reduce export cost for indian traders it will decrease the time to export our products to the world and most importantly we could be standing up to the standards of the biggest players in the port business which includes the singapore port the colombo port and even the iconic jabal ali port of dubai so as students of business this is one of the most important economic development of india that you need to be aware of so in this episode today let's do a deep dive into the port industry of india and understand what the heck is a transshipment port why does india need a transshipment port now how will it help the traders of india and most importantly how will it impact the economy of india So as usual let's start with the basics and first try and understand what exactly is a transshipment port and how is it different from a normal port so let's say a trader from germany requires 2000 electric motors from a trader in mumbai so the trader in mumbai approaches a shipping company and this shipping company offers him two options the first option is a direct service whereby the motors will be shipped in a medium sized vessel from mumbai to germany via swiss canal Now this ship only stops for refueling at multiple stops like the Jabal Ali port and the port of Gibraltar. This is called as the direct service option. The second option is the transshipment service option. In this service, first the goods will be transported from Mumbai to Jabal Ali port in Dubai using a small ship. Then at the Jabal Ali port the goods will be transferred to a large ship that's heading to Germany. This large ship collects goods from many such smaller ships to ship the goods to Germany. So in this scenario the Jabal Ali port serves as the transshipment hub which helps the motors go from a small ship to a large ship and even though the cargo is making an additional stop the overall cost of the delivery is reduced drastically and this gives one major advantage to the traders which is enhanced efficiency and economies of scale and this is where you need to understand the concept of something called TEU for those who don't know TEU stands for 20 foot equivalent unit so it's basically the volume of a 20 foot container and this container is something that you must have seen in the highways so coming back to the story when large container vessels carry more than 10000 TEU it provides a cost saving of at least 30% per TEU as compared to the smaller vessels which carry less than 4000 TEU this is the reason why transshipment hubs are very useful and very important for trading and if you look at the major transshipment hubs across the world they are located in singapore shanghai busan and dubai in fact china alone has more than 6 transshipment hubs in its country whereas if you look at india we have zero transshipment hubs and because of this 62% of our transshipment cargo is handled by other ports like colombo singapore and jabal ali and colombo alone handles 16% of india's container transshipment cargo which means when the goods come from abroad to india 
they stop at the Colombo port and from the Colombo port smaller ships bring our goods to India so even while the goods are coming to India we have to depend on Colombo for the transshipment service so that the goods can arrive to India because Indian ports do not have the capacity to dock larger ships this is how we are dependent on other ports for handling our cargo. At present, over 80% of India's transshipped cargo gets into the country through Colombo and Southeast Asia, costing New Delhi over $200 million annually. Now, the question that you might ask is, when there are so many transshipment hubs in Singapore and Colombo, then why is there a need to build a transshipment hub in India? Is it not a waste of money and resources? Because if you look at the cost, it's costing us more than 7,000 crores. Well, this is exactly what even I was wondering about. And when we looked deeper, we found three reasons why India needs its own transshipment port. The first reason is cost. In short, when we use other countries' transshipment ports, it costs us precious foreign exchange and it's very, very expensive. This cost goes up to $200 per TU of cargo. So Indian ports lose up to $200 to $220 million of potential revenue each year on transshipment handling of cargo, which is either originating or destined for India. So if a transshipment hub is built in India, it is expected to save a thousand crores per year. Secondly, instead of depending on other countries for our transshipment service, we can actually start giving out these transshipment services to other countries, eventually making dollars instead of paying in dollars. And lastly, if there is a diplomatic tension with a country like Sri Lanka or Singapore, India's trade will be in danger. So even if we assume that we will always have friendly relations with Sri Lanka, with increasing Chinese influence with the Belt and Road Initiative, it is still a security threat. Guys, while editing this video, I found a classy example of how the lack of transshipment hub is actually paralyzing Indian trade. So I thought I should let you know. So I was reading this Mint article which is speaking about Sivgasi, which is the powerhouse of fireworks in India and produces about 90 to 95% of the fireworks in India. Here it says that Indian fireworks have a great reputation abroad, especially the fireworks that come from Sivgasi, and they do get a lot of orders from countries like Russia and Poland. But the catch over here is that these shipments cannot be directly shipped to Russia and Poland and they have to be routed via Colombo because we do not have ports which can berth large ships. So we have to use smaller ships, we have to send those goods to Colombo and from there onwards a larger ship takes it to these markets. But the sad fact of all is that these large ships are Chinese ships and they refuse to take up Indian fireworks cargo. Why? Because they have a 45,000 crore market. So in spite of having huge opportunities in the international market, we are not able to tap into these opportunities because we do not have a transshipment hub. And the fun fact is that China has a 45,000 crore export market for fireworks. So even if we are able to scrape out 15% of the market for ourselves, we will be able to double the size of our fireworks industry. This is the example that I found which helps us understand how the lack of a transshipment hub is paralyzing us and uh, I just thought I should let you know about this. And now, back to the episode. This is the reason why, ladies and gentlemen, the Kerala government, the central government and the Adani group are building a transshipment hub for India. Now, another question that popped up in our mind is, why aren't we using ports like the JNPD port or Mundra port as transshipment ports? Because building a new transshipment port is costing us so much money. So why aren't we actually developing our existing ports to become transshipment ports? So what exactly is so special about this Visinjum port that we are specifically developing a transshipment infrastructure for this particular port? Well, as it turns out, there are two very unique features of the Visinjum port that makes it ideal to be India's transshipment hub. Now, if you watched our Maldives episode, you already know how sea lines of communication are the important highways in the ocean and the most important sea lines of communication in the world which connect east and west pass below South India. And if you look at the location of this port, it's just 10 nautical miles away from the international shipping route which connects Europe, the Persian Gulf and the Far East and accounts for 30% of the world's trade. So this will allow ships to dock quickly without diverging too much from their itinerary. So this way, Visinjum has the perfect potential to compete with leading global transshipment ports like Colombo, Singapore and the Jabal Ali port. So this way, Visinjum has the perfect potential to compete with the Colombo port. Secondly, the natural features, especially the depth of this port is just too perfect. So if you've read about ports, you know that large ships require deep ports to dock. So the deeper the port is, the bigger the ship it can accommodate. Now the problem with Indian ports is that we do not have 
enough deep water ports so while large vessels range from 14000 to 18000 tu if you look at chennai it can only handle a maximum of 5000 tu of ships kochi can handle only 4500 tu mundra can handle 8000 tu and jnpt mumbai can only handle 6500 tu of ships and to make matters worse in the next 10 years the average size of ships will be around 12000 to 15000 tus and today it stands at only 6000 to 8000 tu so if we don't upgrade our ports our ports won't be useful at all so visinjum is perfect for some of the world's largest ships because it has a natural waterway that can be expanded to 24 meters below the sea but until now large ships have avoided india and have docked in colombo dubai and singapore because of their depth and their facilities but now visinjum can handle 20000 to 24000 tu ships which ships as long as 400 meters in length and this makes it the only port in india that can handle such large vessels this is the reason why visinjum port is perfect to become a transshipment hub for india and lastly there is no littoral sedimentation in this port for those who don't know littoral sedimentation is the process of sediment deposition or erosion which occurs along the shore so once these sediments settle down they have to be dredged out to make these ports usable for the ships and this process of dredging is such an important cost factor that if you look at mumbai the cost of dredging the harbor has shot up by 154% in the last decade so as this cost increases the cost of maintenance of this port also increases by a large extent and if you look at the annual dredging cost of the mundra port it is 450 crores and the annual dredging cost of the vallarpadam port in kerala is 110 crores but if you look at the visinjum port this sedimentation is very less in this port so again the dredging requirements are low eventually leading to less cost of maintenance these are the reasons why the visinjum port is the best place to build a transshipment port in india so now the most exciting question of all is if this port is built in india then how will it affect the indian economy Well firstly it is estimated that once this port is fully operational by 2025 it will provide 15000 jobs secondly india will become a transshipment hub making our exports cheaper and it will boost our manufacturing thirdly if you look at the india china comparison india's container traffic was only 17 million tus in 2020 whereas if you look at china they stood at 245 million tus So this port will allow India to grab a bigger pie of the global maritime trade which is currently dominated by China. And once phase 1 becomes operational, the Visinjum port is projected to handle 1 million TUs and in subsequent phases it will handle another 6.2 million TUs. And this will make up 70% of India's current transshipment. Fourthly, Indian exporters will not have to travel to Dubai or Singapore for transshipment of cargo and they are expected to save thousands of crores in their expenditure and lastly the visinjum port could boost india's sustainability ambitions so when completed the port will be one of the greenest ports in the world so it can become a hub which supplies clean and green fuel like hydrogen and green ammonia this is the story of india's transshipment ambition now the only problem we hear is that this project was started in 2015 and was to be completed in 2019 but due to covid and the russia ukraine war its completion has been postponed and as we saw from the highway case study this delay in infrastructure project costs us both in terms of higher material cost as well as economic output so now what remains to be seen is how will the government fast track the completion of this port and strengthen the trade pillar of india this is the story of the challenges the developments and the reasoning behind india's transshipment ambition and i just hope you learn something valuable from this case study that's all from my side for today guys now you may have a look at all the study materials from the description if you learn something valuable please make sure to hit the like button in order to make youtube baba happy and for more such insightful business and political case studies please subscribe to our channel thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next one bye bye